Welcome to Operating System Security. This room introduces users to Operating System Security and demonstrates SSH authentication on Linux. Task 1. Every day you use a smartphone or laptop. Almost any type of computer you interact directly or indirectly with an operating system. Operating systems include MS Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Chrome OS, and Linux. Computer hardware refers to all the computer parts and peripherals that you can touch with your hand. Hardware includes the screen, keyboard, printer, USB flash, and desktop board. As shown in the figure below, the desktop board contains many components, in particular, a central processing unit and memory chips, RAM. The desktop board is the main part of a computer and all the other pieces of hardware from keyboard and mouse to screen and printer connect to it. The operating system is the layer between the hardware and the application. Example programs you would use daily include a web browser such as Firefox, Safari and Chrome, including messaging apps such as Signal, WhatsApp and Telegram. All the programs and applications cannot run directly on the computer hardware, however, they run on top of the operating system. Some operating systems are designed to run on laptops and personal desktops such as MS Windows 11 and Mac OS. Other operating systems are designed specifically for smartphones such as Android and iOS. There are also operating systems intended for servers. Examples are MS Windows, IBM and Oracle. The image below shows the popularity of the different operating systems used to browse the internet according to StatCounter based on the data collected during January 2022. You can see Android is the most popular, Windows, the list of confidential and private data goes on. You don't want someone you don't trust to open your phone and go through your photos, conversations and apps. Hence, you need to secure your phone and its operating system. The same goes for your laptop or computer running MS Windows, Mac OS or Linux. The list can get very long depending on what type of user. And considering the nature of the saved data, you want to ensure that your data is secure. When we talk about security, we should think of protecting three things. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability, aka CIA triad. There's a drawing description of the CIA. Question Which of the following is not an operating system? Not. The answer is Thunderbird. You can actually count the characters in the answer required to help you. Task 2, as we mentioned in the previous task, security is concerned with attacks against confidentiality, integrity and availability. This room focuses on three weaknesses targeted by malicious users, authentication and weak passwords, weak file permissions and malicious programs. Authentication is the act of verifying your identity, be it in a local or remote system, Authentication can be achieved via three main ways. Something you know, such as a password or PIN. Something you are, such as a fingerprint. Something you have, such as a phone number, which you can receive an SMS message from. The National Cyber Security Center has published a list of the 100 most 100,000 most common passwords. Let's take a look at the top 20 passwords in the table below. 
Always good to check out the 100,000 most common passwords. These are your most common weak passwords from 1 to 20. Weak file permissions. Proper security dictates the principle of least privilege. In a work environment, you want any file accessible only by those who need access to it to get their work done. Weak file permissions make it easy for the adversary to attack confidentiality and integrity. Access to malicious programs. Some types of malicious programs, such as Trojan horses, give the attacker access to your system. Some types of malicious programs attack availability. One type example is ransomware. Ransomware is a malicious program that encrypts the user's files and demands a ransom. Question, which of the following is a strong password, in your opinion? Answer, task 3. The practical, start machine, start my attack box, start attack box. In this task, you're going to learn a few commands. I'm going to open full screen. It's much easier to read and work through projects. Exit, split view. Now I have a full screen to read and a full screen to work in my attack box. Click here, press enter. You've got three terminal options to select three places available. I like to use the one at the top. Click on it. Type in a simple command like who am I? It's root Give myself some more space. Okay, let's see what's required. Start the attack box by clicking the blue start attack box button. We've already done that. On the attack box, start up terminal. We've completed that already. We will cover the following Linux commands. We were hired to check the security of a certain company. When we visited our client's office, we noticed a sticky note with two words, Sammy and Dragon. Let's see if Dragon is Sammy's password on the target machine. From a text box terminal, we're going to try to log into Sammy's account by executing SSH command. The remote system will ask to provide Sammy's password, which we are going to attempt the word dragon as the password. Okay, let's give it a go. SSH Sammy at my attack box 1010105192. Forgot the dot. Hit enter. Type yes, password dragon, and we're in. You can see by typing who am I, it says we are Sammy. It's 
to go back. Amazing, it worked. Let's confirm we are logged in as Sammy using who am I and return Sammy. We've already done that. To list the files in the current directly, we can use ls. Let's type in ls. We can see some files. If you want to display the contents of any text file, use the command cat and file name. Let's give it a go. Let's cat country.txt. Now we see UK. Let's cat draft.md. And let's cat password.txt. Semi and dragon. Let's see what's next. As you can see, the example shows the exact same steps. Who am I? Sammy. Alice. Got the same text files displayed as we have. And they only catted out the draft.md. Showing operating system security, which we can see is right over here. In our brief introduction to Linux, the last command we will cover is history. Both these users have little disregard for cybersecurity best practices. If you're logged in as Semi, which we are, or any other user, you can use SU Johnny and manually try one password after the next to see which password works for Johnny. Based on the top seven passwords, let's try and find Johnny's password. Top seven passwords from the most common list. Okay. SU Johnny. Enter. Oh, if I can spell Johnny. SU Johnny. Let's go over to our list. <coughs> Excuse me. Where the passwords, 20 most common. Let's take the first one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and enter it. Hit enter. Authentication failure. I'm going to do it again. SU Johnny, copy the second one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Enter it. Authentication failure. Press my up arrow key in order to return previous command, which is SU Johnny. Type in the next password. Hit enter. Authentication failure. Repeat the process. Next. Let's use password. SU Johnny. Type in password. Authentication failure. Let's try the next one. All ones. SU Johnny. All the ones. Authentication failure. Let's keep going. Next. SU Johnny. Authentication failure. Next. ABC123. SU Johnny, ABC, 1, 2, 3, hit enter. And we can see that Sammy now changed to Johnny. So that's our password. Let's double check who am I. And you can see it says Johnny. Let's go back to the task. If you're logged in as Sammy, Johnny. Okay, based on the top seven passwords which we tried, let's try and find Johnny's password. We got it. It was ABC123. Enter. That's your answer. Once you logged in as Johnny, use the command history to check the command that Johnny has typed. 
We expect Johnny to have mistakenly typed the root password instead of a command. What's the root password? Let's type history, hit enter. There we can see su root written and below it looks like a password. Happy hacking. Let's copy this, paste it. That's our answer. While logged in as Johnny, use the command su root to switch to the root account. Display the contents of the file flag.txt in the root directory. What is the content of the file? Okay, su root, hit enter, password, copy and paste this one that we found, happy hacking, and enter this as our password, paste, and we are root, let's type who am I, yes, we are root, it's ls, and there we see flag.txt, it's cat flag.txt and there's your root flag. Copy and paste. That's your final answer. Enter it. Well done. Let's exit out. Close down all our machines that we're working with. Exit, exit, exit. Close down. Terminate and let's terminate show split screen terminate machine. Thank you for watching.